Good morning. I hope everybody's doing well today. <coughs> Excuse me. A little lighter crowd than we had last night. No. We had a fantastic crowd for our Christmas Eve service last night. I think most of the faces I see here I saw last night. All right. Are you like to thank Pastor Kate for a very uh, meaningful service last night. We just said we think that's one of the better crowds we've had in a long time. So it's good to see everybody out last night. What announcements do we have? Patty. Just want to remind everyone there's no Sunday school for the New Year's Day service either. So we'll resume Sunday school the Sunday afterwards. After the New Year, yes. Uh, the Live in Faith class will begin a biblical prophecy uh, session. Kristen has some books from David and Jeremiah, so if you would like to join us. For that, uh, Kristen has some books. Please see Kristen. She'll be glad to give you a book. Any other announcements? All right. Late on announcements. <laughs> <laughs> Let's begin our worship service. Here's what we're going to offer in prayer. Holy and gracious God, your Son Jesus Christ came among us the way, the truth, and the life. He alone is the light of the world, and he is enough light to push away all of the darkness in our lives, in our midst. So God, help us once again to prepare our hearts and our lives to make room for you, who sent his, your, your, your one and only son within us and among us, and help us to share your joy and love in this season. And beyond as we worship together this morning. All of this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our King. Amen. <laughs> Good news, God is in our midst. 
when we renew us with holy love. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, we say rejoice. Good news, good news. The peace of the Lord will dwell in our hearts. We will trust our hearts in thanksgiving. Thanks be to God. Our theme this morning is 238, Angels We Have Heard on High. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 4. So, um, 
Our first scripture reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses, verses 6 and 7. For, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from the time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. A first reflection is written by Dr. David Pollock. And his name shall be called. And how the, how the earth hath awaited this moment. In Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, we have the declaration of the names. Yet for years, there have been only and continuously a question about the name. And his name. In Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, the Lord promises he will take the seed of Abraham make him a great nation, and do him bless the nations of the world. What a promise! And no doubt the question followed, and his name. In 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 through 16, the Lord promised King David a descendant whose throne and kingdom would be like no other. His rule and his kingdom will be forever. What a promise! And no doubt, a question followed, and his name. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1 through 12, there is a promise that a man of sorrows will come, who will be pierced, pierced through for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. The Lord's servant will justify the many as he will bear their iniquities. What a promise! And no doubt, the question followed, and his name. And now in Isaiah chapter 9, the question of the ages is answered. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Finally, the name, yet one more question emerges. And who is this? The answer eventually comes in Luke chapter 1, verses 31 through 33. You shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Jesus, the one through whom all the nations of the world will be blessed. Jesus, the one who will rule and reign forever. Jesus, the one who will bear our guilt, justifying by grace all who put their trust in him. So today, we worship the one who answers the question that echoes throughout the years. And his name? Jesus. We bow before him. We confess that he is the Lord. A first response we will sing to Holy Hawk, the Herald and your sing. We'll be singing verses one and two.
God was here, Emmanuel. He now held in his hands everything for which he had longed. He gazed into the eyes of the Christ. Simeon waited and welcomed, fulfillment of God's plan. What is it I am waiting for? In Advent, we too inhabit the boundary between the promise and the fulfillment. First, in Advent, we rehearse the anticipation of the first coming of Jesus. Jesus came. Next, Advent stirs our present anticipation of the second coming of Jesus. Jesus will come again. Third, Advent reminds us to anticipate and to pursue the coming of Jesus to us today. Emmanuel means God with us. Jesus is with us here and now. Advent is a season of waiting. What are you waiting for? We are waiting for Jesus. We wait for his presence through his spirit. We wait for his work in and through our lives. We wait and we expect. God with us here, now, Christ. Now as a response to scripture and the reflection, we'll be singing 211, O come, O come, Emmanuel. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 4. Let us run with 
Perseverance is the, perseverance is the ways marked out of out for, out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of faith. For the joy he set before him, he endured the cross, scorned his, its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. And this time, uh, we're going to pray together and a response to scripture. Oh, we should, I should read that first. <laughs> Sorry. Last week, I, I ran my first 5K. I didn't run alone. I had two friends to run, run alongside. A friend set the pace, and the other kept the conversation going. Without these ladies and their individual skills, I would not have completed the race, let alone enjoyed it. Lining the streets throughout the race were well-wishers, complete, complete strangers who were encouraging us to persevere with shouts of, keep going, you can do it, is the most delightful. It's downhill, just around the corner. At significant moments in the race, one friend's husband appeared to cheer us on, and the familiar face was the additional motivation that we needed to run another mile. As we approached the final straight, the crowds were thicker, and I spotted my family, go, mama, go, for a cloud of witnesses to see us over the finish line. A Bible passage used this same race analogy, pressing forward to run the race marked for us, casting off hindrances because of the example of Jesus. Because of Jesus' obedience and his endurance at the cross, we will not grow weary or lose heart first. This is our hope, and all shall be well. Today, as Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father, he is calling us home, not as one unfamiliar with sufferings, but as one who has endured and triumphed. As you reflect back on the past year, with all of its challenges and, and heartache, all of its joys and celebrations acknowledged with T.S. Eliot that the moment of the rose, or the moment of the yew tree are of equal duration. Praise God for each separately, for the moments of difficulty and the moments of ease, and then praise Him for the experience of life combining the two. Thank <coughs> you for those who have come alongside you as you ran the race of 2022, who have cheered you on through yet on the year, refocusing your gaze on Jesus. As we consider the past year, we simultaneously look forward to continuing the race in the new year with the longing for Christ's second advent. Here's the idea again. What we call the beginning is often the end. And to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. The close of one year becomes the opening of another, bringing us closer to that second coming of our Lord. As Christians, we wait for the resurrection hope, knowing that that can and will bring life. He will come. We just don't know when.
here is a, a responding player on the screen, so you can display it there. Oh, we want to Lord God, who inherited eternity and has brought thy servants to the beginning of an Arabian year. Pardon, become hungry, excuse me. Our transgressions in the past. Bless God, us new year, and graciously abide on us of all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Message to our choir. <laughs> this is an awkward time. Sorry. <laughs> God, the source of all good things, has given us what we need. In joyful response, let us offer our gift, the fruit of our labors, and the dedication of our hearts for loving service in the name of Christ. Trauma, 
and wheat, make the kingdom feel like a pipeline, plastic, to those in our community who long to see your love and grace expressed through your flowers, to those in your church who seek to be faithful to make a difference while juggling the needs of themselves and their families, and to us who long to know you nothing more and to live as citizens of your kingdom in this place and time. Most gracious and merciful God, we lift up our sisters and brothers to you this morning again. Leona Hensler, Anne Anderson, Rachel Wilkinson, Frank Warren, John Spencer, Nancy Bridgeport, Tom Nelson, Terry Buckley, Tommy Height, Glenn Pierce, and Barbara Johnson. We also offer our prayers for Brenda Anthony and other members recently having troubles with their physical issues and spiritual hurdles. Good Father, reveal your holy presence to them and pour out your Holy Spirit upon all of us so we together find joy and hope in you and receive peace and comfort from you and this city. May your coming be something we hope for but also be something we experience moment by moment. Dear friends, let us now take a step towards our gracious and faithful God in seeking for his comfort and peace and love and grace in silence. We ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Messiah. Amen. Now let us join the prayer that our Lord taught us by giving us here on earth by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who
may God bless you that you remember we are all called to continue God's redemptive work of love and healing in God's place, in and through God's name, in God's spirit, continually creating and breathing new life and grace into everything and everyone we touch. Dear friends, go with joy and love to serve your newborn King. Amen.